Hi ladies, welcome back to another quick fertility mom episode for you. Today I'm going to dive in really quick into inflammation and fertility. What is the effect that it has on your pregnancy chances? What does it mean for miscarriage risk? All of those things. But first, I really want to tell you that if you think you're struggling with inflammation, which pretty much all of us are, but if you're having unexplained infertility, secondary infertility, miscarriages, any kind of autoimmune problem at all, and you think inflammation is playing a big part in this stuff, then come to my next live workshop, my fertility workshop. We go over fertility strategy. I teach you all about inflammation. I give you steps to start taking right that day. I give you scientific breakthroughs that we're making on egg quality, all sorts of really cool stuff. So if you haven't already registered and come to my live fertility workshop, please register for that down below in the first pinned comment. I'll give you the link to register for that or down in the description box below as well. So I hope to see you there. And now let's dive right into inflammation and fertility. So I get asked about inflammation all the time from women all over the world. And this can end up being one of the trickiest situations It can be a really big problem for many women. It can be the primary driver for issues, or it can kind of be hiding in the background. It can be a secondary issue. It can kind of be tagging along with something else. Either way, we have to deal with the inflammation. So there's a few things that we have to know about at first. The first thing to know is what kinds of diagnoses inflammation can either be a primary driver for or a secondary driver for, but it's present in a lot of different cases. I see inflammation as being a really big driver in a lot of things like unexplained infertility, secondary infertility, sometimes in recurrent miscarriages, this is the biggest thing. IVF failure with poor poor and low-grade embryos or failure to transfer if you're having a really tough time getting that lining up, inflammation can be a big driver there. If you have any recurrent kinds of infections like E. coli or any kind of uterine infection that continues to come back, inflammation is is a deal here any kind of autoimmune problems whatsoever, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, any kind of arthritis at all, inflammation is a huge, huge factor here. We have a lot of immune triggering that is making that immune system work way over time and causing actual damage to the body. We have to figure out what's going on here with that, okay? Endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, any kind of blocked tube situation, we definitely have a lot of inflammation going on there. Now those go hand in hand, or that goes hand in hand with the hormonal imbalance that's already present, causing the manifestation of the fibroids or the endometriosis itself. So inflammation is always there. They kind of go hand in hand with that. There are many other things as well, but those are kind of the main umbrella diagnoses that I see inflammation being a really big deal with. The other really important thing to know is that Even if you've had blood laboratory markers for inflammation drawn, like a CRP or a C-reactive protein, even if those have come back normal or negative, that doesn't mean that there isn't inflammation in the body, either as a primary driver or as a secondary underlying condition for whatever else you have going on. This is something I see time and time and time again, that laboratory values are normal. Your doctor will send you on your way saying, hey, everything's normal here. You don't have any inflammation. Don't worry about it. But yet that person is breaking out in a skin rash every four days, has a ton of psoriasis and skin lesions, and also has an autoimmune condition. This is the clinical presentation. Then obviously we have some sort of inflammatory trigger going on. We need to investigate that further. So really take a look at your clinical presentation. What are you feeling? What do you see happening in your body? Even if your lab results come back normal, that may not be the full story. So it's really important that we actually look at what else is going on. This is similar to what I talked about in the estrogen dominance video, where even if your hormone levels come back as normal, you may still be experiencing fibroids and or heavy painful periods. You may experience all these other symptoms that tell us the story that there is a hormone imbalance, which means those normal results for you aren't optimal for you. We're not worried about normal, we're worried about optimal values for you and your body. So don't always go by lab values, Go by how you feel and what you're seeing in your own clinical presentation. The third really important thing to know with inflammation is that it is not random. Your body doesn't just wake up one day and go, ooh, you know what? I'm going to be inflamed today and forevermore. Your body does not do that. There's always a cause. There's always some sort of something that is triggering your body to be inflamed And then there's something happening inside the body that is allowing it to continue to be in that constant state of inflammation. 
So our job becomes finding what that trigger is for you and your body, cleaning it up, healing the body, and allowing it to come back into a really nice equilibrium or any kind of inflammation that happens, the body can rapidly just take care of it. And it's not constantly in this extremely high state of inflammation, which makes the body feel very, very unsafe to get or stay pregnant. This is something I really, really talk about in depth and in detail in my workshops. So definitely register. We can talk about it more, what's going on for you and what makes that state become constant and how we can bring that state down. One of the last really important things to understand with inflammation is that we cannot medicate ourselves out of it or supplement ourselves out of it either. I love supplements. I think they're great. But one thing that I really, really find that is disturbing in the fertility world is that we rely way more on supplements and pills than on healing what's actually going on in the body. So I use supplements so that we can actually strategically kind of direct what we're trying to heal and what we're trying to do. So while trying to figure out what the trigger is, we're also able to manage the inflammatory effects. Some of the supplements that I like to use for this are vitamin C, anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000 milligrams per day, depending on the diagnosis and what's going on with the woman. Another thing is vitamin E. Again, dose varies and the form will vary as well, depending on what's going on with the body. Vitamin E is one of those tricky supplements. I'll have to do an entire video on that just, just by itself. So look out for that in the coming weeks. The other really awesome supplement that I like to use is N-acetylcysteine or NAC, um, anywhere between 600 milligrams and 1800 milligrams per day. Again, depending on what's happening for you, what's happening in your body and the other medications that you're taking as well. I do not recommend that you just go full hog and start taking everything all at once. I definitely think that looking for that trigger, finding what's happening through your diet and lifestyle is really important first. And supplementing on top of that is like the cherry on top. It's definitely supplementary. It's not supposed to be the main thing. Finding the trigger has to be the main thing. Supplementing comes after. Now, I tried to make this super short. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, I'm going to make a three minute video for everybody and they can understand that inflammation is super important. And then I got into filming it and I was like, this is not going to be short for them because I can talk about this stuff for like literally 20 hours, but I'm not going to torture you with that today. If you think that you have some sort of inflammation going on in your body, it's not something you should ignore. Go with your gut on this. You know your body best. Don't let a doctor tell you that you're totally fine while you kind of think that there's something going on. If you want to know more about inflammation, I talk about it a lot more in the fertility workshop. It's totally free. We spend the entire time talking about fertility strategy. I give you some scientific breakthroughs that have been made in egg quality, which is super exciting and I nerd out about a lot. So if you're interested in all that stuff, come to the free fertility workshop. We'll talk about all that kind of stuff. And hopefully th those changes, that strategy that I give you will be the thing that helps you get your 2023 baby. I hope you learned something on this video. I'm really sorry it wasn't short. I'll try better on my next one. I'll see you again later, ladies. Bye.